Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Hive 2. This is video five, and today we're taking a look at the oscillators. So let's right click the display port, go to init preset. So Hive has four oscillators, right? We have the first one here on the left hand side, oscillator two on the right hand side, and both of these oscillators have sub oscillators down over here, making a total of four. So by default, this is going to come as a sawtooth. And now if we click this list here, we have a lot of different choices. We have sine, sawtooth, triangle, pulse, square, half, narrow, white noise, pink noise, and wavetable. So what's really cool about the wavetable, especially in Hive, is that we also have the sub oscillator attached to it. So if we want to have the sub oscillator basically mimic the wavetable, we can click this here and go to like osc. And now the sub oscillator is going to basically be another wavetable, but just tuned a little bit lower or tuned higher depending on how you want to tune it but we're going to get to that in just a little bit here so let's right click this go back to in a preset here and one thing that's actually really really cool is that each of these oscillators have their own solo buttons here so if we had the first oscillator and the sub here routed to the filter we're going to talk about that a little bit later but just for now we have oscillator one and sub routed to the filter and we have something like this and we just want to concentrate on the sub we can solo this and just listen to that oscillator, which is really nice because if you're doing a lot of stuff and you just wanna hear what an oscillator sounds like, you have the option to do so. So let's go back to a new preset here and we have our sawtooth here. So the first thing we should talk about is unison. So we can click this list or we can scroll, but as you notice, we have 16 voices of unison, which is quite a lot here. So let's go over here to eight right now. So we have eight voices of unison and right below that, this is gonna be where we're gonna detune it, where it says detune. So there's a little bit more to this detune that meets the eye. So if we go back to an init preset here, if we have one voice, this detune is gonna be a fine tuning. Now, if you notice, if we turn this up here, it's gonna detune it upwards. However, if we deselect oscillator one and go to oscillator two and do the same thing, it's gonna detune it downwards. So keep that in mind. If you have one voice of unison, the first oscillator, the detune is going to rise in pitch. So again here, and for oscillator number two, it's going to descend a pitch, which is kind of a really interesting creative choice that they have in there. Now keep in mind, so let's say we have, let's actually go to a new preset here. Let's say we have one voice of unison and we change it to eight like we did before. And we detune it here. Our sub is main, basically, let's say a sawtooth. And let's just solo this real quick. Bring this here to the uh, filter here. You'll notice that the sub oscillator is actually not getting detuned. If we want that kind of functionality, we'd have to go to like osc. And then the sub is also going to be detuned. So keep that in mind if you're kind of wondering why your sub isn't being detuned with the unison voices. That's why you have to keep this on like osc there. And something kind of interesting in the manual that I don't think should be overlooked here. So to fine tune the oscillator with unison, so let's go back to a new preset here. So we have this oscillator here. Let's go to eight voices of unison again and kind of increase the detune. And you kind of just want to detune the oscillator itself. We're going to have to go into the matrix here. And then we're going to bring our target here and go to the tuning here. And then go to the constant. And we can tune it that way, or we can shift and then click here slightly little values like that. And basically just kind of detune it to taste. Thought we mentioned that here. So let's go back to a new preset here and let's go back to maybe seven voices of unison here. Next up, we have the width here. So if we, by default, it's kind of all stereo, right? Left and right. But if we kind of want to shrink that down a little bit, kind of have it more in the center, this is going to be the knob that we're going to reach for. But keep in mind, that's going to be if there's going to be actually unison voices. And it's going to be centered around the pound knob, which is kind of interesting. And then right, we're right back here with the pan, so basically panning left and right. And then we have the volume of the oscillator itself. And then we have the vibrato, which is kind of cool. So let's change this to a sign for this. We have our vibrato, and that is found in the key section down over here on the left-hand side. 
we can increase the rate here. Or a little delay here. So it kind of fades in a little bit. And keep in mind that look at these arrows here, it's going to affect the sub as well. So if we kind of put the sub in the mix as well. Pretty self-explanatory, hopefully, because of the arrows, right? So let's go back to a new preset here. And then we have our tune here for our sub. So if you put our sub here in the filter, we can do this all the way down to minus 24 or plus 24. So you can use your sub oscillator as a higher octave oscillator if you'd like to. And then moving on here, let's go back to a new preset here. Now we have our octaves here. We can go up to or down to. And it's really quick if you use the scroll wheel as well. And same goes for semitones. We can go up 12 and down 12. So an octave up and an octave down. So back to a new preset here. So the phase is kind of interesting. This is kind of important here. So right now by default, this is going to be on random. So basically every time you press a note here, the phase is going to be a random value every time you press the note, right? Kind of gives you that organic kind of analog feel. But if you're making maybe something like percussion or you want something to be exact every time you hit it here, you want to change it from random to reset. So it's going to hit the same phase every single time. And the next one here, which is actually very interesting, is called flow. So basically the phase of the next note continues where the previous note left off. So you press a note and whatever value that is where it stops, whatever that phase value is, the next note is going to start from there and continue on. So it's kind of really, it flows, I guess you could say. And another thing here, so now we have the oscillator, so we're kind of thinking of how to route these to different kind of places, right? So by default, we see this filter one here, which is where it's going to be going, to be going to. Now oscillator one is selected. Now we know that the first oscillator is going here. If we want the first sub to go to the first filter, we just click the sub one over here. And that's how we're going to write it here. And I think you probably guessed it here. If you want oscillator two, we're going to click oscillator two and sub two and so on and so forth. Now we have everything going to this filter here. Now we're going to cover this a little bit more in the filter section once we start talking about the filters. But if you want to route these filters in series, right, you know, sending this first filter to the second filter, what we're going to need to do is select filter one on the second filter, but also keep in mind to turn this first one down. So now everything is going to the first filter and then this first filter is spitting everything out and going to the second one. And now the second one's controlled by the second amp. As we can tell how this release is much different. And one last thing before we let you go here. So if you're kind of interested in doing pulse with modulation, something kind of like that, what we could do here is go from the sawtooth over to the pulse here. Now there's not necessarily a pulse width control here right in front of us. Hive is kind of different in the sense that more so the simplistic controls are right in front of you to get something quick. But if you want to do something a little bit more in depth, you can, there's just a slight different way to go to it. So we can grab this constant here and drag it over here to the pulse. If you want to do something manually like this. We can do that, for example, or we can go back to the pulse. If we want to have the LFO change it here, we can grab the LFO and kind of drag it onto here and then increase some depth here. Maybe slow this significantly down. And this is going to be how we're going to be doing pulse width modulation. And we're going to get to this a little bit later, but you can always change this from gate to sync. So it's kind of just free running in that sense. But yeah, that is the oscillators in a nutshell. In the next video, we're going to be diving into the wavetable because there's a lot that meets the eye for this wavetable that gets pretty in-depth. So I think a video dedicated just to the wavetable would be probably the best idea. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.